Now going over to the culture part of the podcast, you have Elon firing his entire election integrity staff. Is a little, is a little shimmer of hope restored perhaps? Now we're still waiting for the specific details on why he had chosen to do this. Now one of the issues with Twitter, now X, is that it's never really made a profit. And that wasn't really an issue until we had him buying the company and now you know, there's no, no such thing as free cash anymore in the United States. You're not getting 0% interest rates anymore. Quite the antithesis is the opposite. Interest rates are at all time high. A lot of tech companies were propped up by cheap cash. And they were the old metric for, you know, is Facebook successful? Is are all these companies successful? A lot of the metrics for social media apps in particular, it was the number of users. How many active users do you have on the platform? Which also de-incentivizes de things like getting rid of bots, unfortunately. So now more and more companies, they're starting to ask, well, great, you have this many users. When are you going to make a profit? And Twitter never has. And part of the issue, he bought the company trying to think, how can we make a profit? So they started to come out with Twitter Blue, which is an interesting, unique idea. As far as I know, the first major social media company to actually have an idea where you pay for the product instead of you being the product. Now, the attempt was to do this to get away from advertisers because when you bought the company, 50% of ad spend gone. So the advertisers are not spending as much as they used to on the platform. However, now, now, apparently, if I were to guess the logistics and the finances behind it and why they're moving towards advertisers, not enough people actually bought Twitter Blue to make the company financially viable. So they had to go court the advertisers again, unfortunately. Now, in doing so, Elon went out and hired Linda Mac, uh, Macarena. Oh, Yakarina. Close enough, some might say. But he hired her, and her whole experience is ad sales and making sure, I believe she came from NBC, also World Economic Forum, apparently. And quite a different perspective. When you're looking at advertisements, more often than not, they don't want controversy. They want censorship. They want only one line of ideological thought to be pushed out. And... If you don't censor it, they will not do business with you, basically. So my guess is that he hired this election integrity team in ahead of the 2024 elections to appease some of those advertisers. Now, unfortunately, as literally anyone with a modicum of intelligence could predict, they immediately became more draconian, shadow banning accounts, hiding countless comments, even something as silly as a GIF or a GIF, as a youth might say, of someone taking beer out of a fridge, even that's been censored. But they they hide it, saying this is a sensitive post. You, you have to do an extra click to actually see it. And of course, you have major brands like Bud Light that are censoring everything as even remotely controversial with their dying brand, where you actually they hide it completely. You have to press a button if you want to see it. Now, as we gain more perspective and we gain a little bit more insight, it will be interesting to see what were the specifics or what was the pivotal moment that caused him to fire these inept draconian people. It's one of those things where he claimed he did it because they in of the they in the um themselves actually were causing election interference, which is hilarious hilariously ironic, although not too unsurprising. And it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully we'll get back to the point where free speech is still a thing in the United States. Unfortunately, I mean on Twitter, it seems Maybe maybe there's a shimmer of hope. Do you does this give you any hope that there'll be less censorship? Why do you think he really got rid of these folks? And do you think he needs to get rid of the CEO? Where her whole perspective is to appease advertisers. And inherently, that perspective is one that values advertisers more than free speech. She's literally said that they will have a policy of say she literally said you have freedom of speech, not freedom of reach. Where you've had instances like the Daily Wire where they'll say something, but Twitter will actually manipulate the feeds so that no one will see it. So you could tweet it, but no one's going to see it. What's the point? And in some cases, if you tweet it, only the people who follow you tweet it. So they're doing all sorts of shady things again, and perhaps Elon just had enough. He got sick of it? But let me know. Do you think we'll find out the real reason soon of why he got rid of them? And then does this restore any faith you might have in the previous platform? Let me know in the comments. It would be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Thank you, everyone, again for taking the time to tune in today. I know it's ambitious, but we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of September, or rather October, because my ADHD the months go way too quick these days. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, if you take the time to like and comment, I really appreciate the feedback, even if it's critical, as we try to make the show better and better together. And also, lastly, don't forget to take the time to 
Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.